Good morning, Bethesda Church family, and welcome to today's virtual church service. I am Davis Clark, chair of our youth leadership team. Today, we will celebrate our youth and particularly our seniors. This is not the youth Sunday that we are used to or that these seniors have thought about and dreamed of for so many years. We as a community of faith should be very proud of the loving servant hearts that our youth have and share. Today, we want to especially thank our seniors for the leadership that they have modeled not only for our youth, but for the rest of us as well. Thank you, Bethesda, for your connections with our youth. A kind word, a handshake, a hug, Sunday school, devotions, the list goes on and on. We as a church family plant the seeds of faith, hope, and love that Jesus teaches us. The greatest of these is love. Bethesda youth, and especially for our seniors, we love you. Let us worship our Lord.
love and trust you today. You are our shelter when we are lost and weak. We don't need to be afraid when things are crazy. Please join me now in the prayer of confession. Dear God, none of us are perfect in the pursuit to be like you. We sometimes claim that we are, or we sometimes just stop caring. We think that we know the answers. Sometimes we think that we don't need your help, but we are mistaken. We need you to wash our sins, our flaws, our imperfections. Wash them far away from us so we can do all we can for your sake. We need to stop judging and accept. Help us to stop criticizing others, accept your word and the grace you give us. Amen. God is sheer mercy and grace, not easily angered. He's rich in love. God doesn't easily, endlessly nag and scold, nor hold grudges forever. God doesn't treat us as our sins deserve, nor pay us back in full for our wrongs. As high as heaven is over the earth, and as far as sunrise is from sunset, God has separated us from our sins. Please join me now in singing, Help Us Accept Each Other. Help us accept each other as Christ accepted us. Teach us as sister, brother, each person to embrace. Be present, Lord, among us and bring us to believe. We are ourselves accepted and meant to love and live. Teach us, O oh Lord, your lessons as in our daily life. We struggle to be human and search for hope and faith. Teach us to care for people, for all, not just for some. To love them as we find them, or as they may become. Let your acceptance change us so that we may be moved in living situations to do. Until we know by heart the table of forgiveness and laughter's healing heart. Lord, for today's encounters with all who are in need, who hunger for acceptance, for justice, and for bread, we need new eyes for seeing. Spirit, Lord, bring us, make us one. The Old Testament reading, Jeremiah 1, 6 through 8. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am only a boy, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Hey children of Bethesda, today we are going to talk about faith. Faith is trusting and believing in God. My Sunday school teacher, Henry Hogan, taught this to me and my other high school friends this last week, and I wanted to share it with you. We are going to be talking about faith by using Ooblek. <laughs> so if you would like to join in making this with us, then you're going to need some materials. First, you're going to need an empty bowl or cup. Then you're going to need one cup of cornstarch. <laughs> then you're going to need half a cup of water. And also, <laughs> if you want to add a little bit of color, you can add a few drops of food dye. OK. Okay, now that we are done making it, I'm going to talk about what each ingredient means. 
So first, we started with an empty bowl, which represents no faith. Then we added a little bit of cornstarch, which represents a little bit of faith, but the cornstarch can be brushed aside and blown away. Then we added some water, which is a little more faith, and it's a liquid, which is some substance, but still not solid, but moves in the direction of the force that is moving it. And then my favorite part, we added just a little bit of food coloring to make it this pretty green. We ended with oovlick. So now we have two. So the final product, oovlick, represents a firmer faith. It is flexible enough to resist <laughs> the arrows or test that are shot at our faith. This could be doubt, questions, why, or anything else. But what happens when it is stretched? <laughs> what happens when it is stretched or pushed in? It bounces back to its regular form. There is a little flexibility, but strong enough to resist it. One way, or a few ways, you can strengthen your faith to be more like Ublek is you can go to church, you can pray with your family and friends, or you can read devotions. Before we end, I want to apologize to the parents. Sorry for the mess, but I'm glad your kids are having fun. And then one last reminder, don't flush the oobleck down the drain. Remember, you have to put it in the trash can.
the New Testament reading, Matthew 5, 14 through 16. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one after lighting a lamp puts it under a bushel basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Good morning, Bethesda. My name is Ella Clark. I have been planning my senior moment six, six, since sixth grade, and I have thought about what I was going to say way too many times. Now that the time has come, it's hard for me to actually figure out what I want to say. I had to come to the conclusion that there is no such thing as a perfect senior moment. I will never be satisfied with what I wrote, and I will always have more to say. Bethesda has been my home for my entire life. I wish I could start from the beginning and talk about all the amazing memories, but we definitely don't have time for that. A lot of you know that I am the youngest of the four, four Clark girls. This meant that I was the last to join youth group and I had to watch Ashton, Catherine, and Kelly live it up with Tommy Miller and Sam for a whole year. When I finally got to join them, it was everything I thought it would be. We played games, went, went on trips, did devotions, ate good food. Shout out to Miss Luana's chicken tetrazzini. My three older sisters have always led the way for me, and I don't think they know how much I look up to them. Singing in church with them is something I will cherish forever, and I want to thank Bethesda for giving us such an amazing way to worship with one another. Being a year younger also meant I had to wait a year to be in Henry's Sunday School class. The wait for this may have been harder than the wait for youth group. Henry, or as we like to call him, Henster, always makes sure we're having fun. Sunday school often involved candy, playing putt-putt blindfolded, Panera bagels, a scavenger hunt, making candles, and so much more. Henry's lesson to us in sixth grade has been to let our light shine. I want him to know that I will continue to let my light shine in this next chapter of my life. Henry gave me Hinster Adventures, movie nights, lots of Shutterfly gifts, and best of all, a group of friends. My graduating class and last year's graduating class are known as Hinster's Kids. Henry gave us a place to bond and grow together, and I can't thank him enough. This group of friends have helped me through middle school, high school, and now college. Tammy's Lake House, Montree, anybody who is willing to share their pool with us, or even the church van are just some of the places we made memories together. I want to thank the Stalls, the Ardingers, and the Fermanskis for letting me hang out with your kids, and shout out to Mare and Julie for being the best chaperones. Katie, Adrian, and I have been friends since middle school. We have been on many youth trips together and have had way too many memories to keep track of. I want to say thank you to anyone who has had to teach us or chaperone us along the way. Sam had to deal with us and most definitely did a great job. Sam taught me that it's okay to be a little crazy and sometimes I could be a little more adventurous. I quickly realized that she, had, she was way more than just a youth leader in my life and it was very hard to say goodbye when she decided it was time to start a new chapter in her life. Alex Patty decided he could take on the challenge of filling this role and he definitely succeeded. Alex stepped in and kept things going just like they had been. My sister Kathy was the youth intern for what seemed like most of my summers in youth group. Kathy has been my hype man during my time in youth group. We danced a lot, mostly at Montreal, but honestly, anywhere that had a speaker. One time we danced a little too hard in the Almond's backyard and she sprained her ankle, I think, but it's okay because that did not stop her. Sam, Kathy, Alex, and Tommy Miller, who was also interned for many of the years I was in youth group, have all played such a big part in my life and in my relationship with God. I can't thank them enough. I lastly need to thank my parents. Thank you for finding a church that I was able to grow up in. Thank you for constantly encouraging me to get more involved, and thank you for making me and my sisters take music lessons as kids so I now have three built-in singing partners. <laughs> Also, thank you for letting me and my friends come over any time or the occasional times that the entire youth group came over just to hang out. For every youth Sunday I have, ha I have helped with, I have wanted there to be something new and completely different from what we had, to, had done before. This is definitely not what I imagined, the solution being, but I'm glad as a senior we have finally accomplished this. Jimmy, Katie, and Adria, this is not exactly how I imagined this going, but I am thankful to have had friends like you to make it to this point with. Once again, thank you, Bethesda family. The impact you have had on my life is immeasurable. 
Thank you for Bible school, talent shows, Sunday school, mission trips, and summer camps. To all the people who made these activities happen. Thank you to all the parents and youth leaders who have taught me to grow with others and with myself through Christ. I can't wait to take what I've learned and from, from you and continue to grow. Thank you, Bethesda for family, for keeping my heart so full for the past 17 years. Good morning, Bethesda. Hi, it's me, your favorite guy, Jimmy Gorba. And I can't believe it's up to this moment now that I'm a senior. It's just like yesterday, I was five years old and I just came here. And <laughs> that I have grew up with this church. I have grew up with Davis. I grew up with Pastor Jonathan. I have grew up with many pastors. And I grew up with Larry Arnold, Nancy Arnold, teaching me how to sing a little bit, even though I went to playing cello. And, and uh, Jim Rensdale taught me a lot, and, um, and it's just hard for me to go away now. And what, and Johnny Burns, I'm going to miss that man because he taught me so much to never look away when you're talking to a person and do a firm handshake. Look him right in the eye when you're talking to him. And now... I'm set off to do my own adventure with God. And what I was praying to God to be in between of becoming an auto mechanic or a paramedic. And then God answered my prayers and he told me to become a paramedic because I wanted to save lives. And I wish, I want to thank my mom and my dad, even though he's not here, he'll be really proud of me. And I like to thank my brother and my sister that I'm their role model now. Showing them that going through thick and thin and now Adria, Ella, and Katie are kind of like brothers and sisters of Christ. And Davis is the brother is the father of Christ to me. And David Hudson's my fishing buddy. And Sue Hudson's my other mother. And I have a few other mothers, trust me. But and a few other dads. And it, and I will be attending Sand Hills for two years to become a paramedic. And and I and I just love Henry how he taught me to keep my light shining through since sixth grade when I went there. I didn't think about like I thought this was gonna be another boring Sunday school class, but no. It was so adventurous. He taught, he taught us different things at the zoo. Like, you can go in the back of the zoo if you pay him extra. I'm just kidding. <laughs> right. And taking us to a place called Lazy Five Ranch. And Tammy's Lake House. Me and Palmer, well, we, were just, we make sure that Ella didn't get crashed. And we accidentally flipped over and got a big whiplash. Love that. And... And thank you to Tammy with that grilled chicken. So fire. And and I really miss, and I'd like to thank Sam Cunningham, or Sammy Hammy is what I like to call her, for being the best youth leader until she left. And I'd like to thank Alex for being a really good youth leader to fill in for Sam. I know those are big shoes, but he did the job. And I'd like to thank Tommy Miller for being the best youth intern, the best youth intern playing Grog with him and playing Nerf War with him, like Rainbow Six Siege, it's a video game. And, um, and that me and him got closer together. And I'd like to thank Jeffrey, or Jeff is what I called him, like by roasting him every day. And Jasper and Palmer and Ian, they were my other brothers, and Patrick Byers. And I'd like to thank every one of you guys that helped me through this journey to come to here. I'd like to thank Chuck Dearborn. He gave me a hug every day and he taught me well and, and that this year I lost 75 pounds. It's crazy. 
And now, and now it's off to my journey. And thank you, Bethesda, and I'll be back later. Good morning, Bethesda. My name is Adria Stahl. Some of you may not recognize me because my family attends a separate church, but so many of you all have been such a big part of my life. I was first brought to Bethesda Presbyterian Church when I was in sixth grade by my weird friend from school, Ella Clark. My family was in between churches and encouraged me to attend a youth group while we continued to look for a permanent church home. My father was assigned by the military to live in Florida, apart from the family for the entirety of my eighth grade year and into my freshman year of high school. It was in this period of separation that Bethesda Presbyterian's youth group really became my family. I've made so many memories both within and outside the walls of this church. Some of these memories include, but are not limited to, howling with wolves at the zoo, almost getting attacked by bears at Montreat, accidentally swallowing a seltzer tablet one too many times, telling scary ghost stories at 4 a.m., square dancing till my feet blistered, and being terrified while playing grog with Tommy. One of my favorites is attempting to ski down a double black diamond route on Sugar Mountain with Palmer Noise. Before I tell you that I peed myself at the top of the mountain, let me make it known that neither Palmer nor I could ski very well at the time. After finishing the bunny hill a few times, we knew we were ready to tackle the big hill. As we hopped off the ski lift, it quickly became apparent that we had both made a big mistake. It only took me seeing Palmer face plant three times for me to, well, you know the rest. It is these memories that come to mind when I think of this church. It is the countless amount of times I've walked through these pews and been greeted with the warmest smiles. It is the greetings from both familiar faces and the kindness of strangers that I think of. It is the lifelong friendships I've made that I remember when I hear the words Bethesda Presbyterian. My boyfriend Brad Pitt once said, a family is a risky venture because the greater the love, the greater the loss. That's the trade-off, but I'll take it all. Even though I am a little biased because he's my boyfriend, I think there's quite a lot of truth to that statement. Having a family like Bethesda means so much love, and now that us seniors are leaving, so much loss. But at the same time, we are not losing Bethesda, nor are you losing us really. We have all made a connection that will re remain with us wherever we go and for however long we may be gone. So thank you, Bethesda Presbyterian Church, for taking such great care of us and for especially taking such great care of me. Thank you. Please join me in an affirmation of faith. We believe that God loves us endlessly, abundantly, recklessly, excessively, and unconditional, and outrageously. In turn, we believe that we should love our neighbors and our enemies in the same way. We believe that though we fall short in God's loving mercy, God will continue to give us more than we deserve. God will search and know us and will never give up on us. We believe that God is relentless in love for, for us and we should be the same way towards others. Please join me in our prayers this morning. Dear God, thank you for challenging us to find new positives in our life. Thank you for friends and family to love and worship with. Thank you for giving us the ability to stretch our minds in order to make a worship service happen every Sunday. And thank you for all the hidden blessings in our everyday lives. Help us through this pandemic. Help to prepare the class of 2020 to go in the next phase of our lives and help the families that have COVID patients and help these COVID patients get through this and help this world to reunite again. I pray that we can find peace amongst this storm. I pray that we can remain united as a church family under God's love. Let us continue to love others, to persevere, and most importantly, to trust you. 
Let us use our circumstances to remind us that you are constant and will never leave our side. I pray that we continue to pray for those in our community and those outside our community, as we know we are all in this together. We love you very much, and we pray this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us today in your space for this service. We are so blessed to have our youth and our community of faith. Please keep them in your prayers as they navigate the chaos of these days and start a new chapter of their life. Now go out and reflect God's light, his grace, his mercy, and his love to others as you encounter others this week.